ping pong parachute. Purpose, this is a bottle rocket that's with a twist. You will be designing a rocket that will la launch a ping pong ball attached to the top with a, oh, sorry, with a parachute attached to it on the top of the rocket. So the rocket, you put a ping pong ball with parachute on top, it flies up, and then uh, when it falls down, the parachute should unfold and keep the ping pong ball aloft for as long as possible. So the better your parachute is, the longer time you'll have, the better your score. For the rocket, it's obvious that the bigger of a rocket you use, the better. So, however, they place a restriction on this. It has to be a one liter soda bottle that's unmodified, and you pump it full of air, not water as shown here, up to 40 pounds per square inch of pressure. So there's a pump, you pump it up, and then once you've reached their desired pressure, which could be less than that, you activate the trigger mechanism and this bottle rocket will fly up, and then it falls down, parachute unfolds, and ping pong ball slowly comes to drop. Well, I wish it was all that simple. Let's take a look at how some of the previous year's teams coped with this event. It would be a one liter bottle that has carbonated water, uh, a ping pong ball, and some means of getting the ping pong ball to stay in the air as long as possible. Three, two, and one. We wanted to put the ping pong ball on the top, so when the rocket goes up and it falls back down, the parachute's higher up than the actual bottle, so it can get as much time in the air. When it deploys, we want to make sure it deploys fully out. Stevenson High School from Illinois, first launch. Three, two, and one. Well, despite the simple appearance of this event, many teams put forward poorly at this last year, likely due to a lack of performance. So it's important to make sure that your parachute unfolds. Otherwise, it's absolutely useless. Now, this event is actually very affordable, unlike some of the previous ones where you need to have a fancy build, you have an aluminum 3D print, blah, blah, blah. All you need for this event is drawn here on this slide, like a starter pack. And the launcher can be purchased or built for around $30 as well. Would anyone like to take a guess what the trash bag is for? Uh, type your guess in the comments. Yes, everyone thinks it's a parachute, or at least two people, and hopefully everyone else as well. Yes, it is a parachute. Pos trash bags. You're literally building this out of trash, and yet it's so difficult. So, um, hopefully this year we will be able to make several creative design choices that will allow us to have a good performing parachute and rocket and at the workshop i will give you some of my ideas on what it takes to make a good design and we'll look at reference designs what's out there what people have done to make sure that we don't repeat their mistakes now this is kind of the i, I mentioned this was an aerospace event now this is why i think so or the two, the bottled rocket and the right stuff, they're kind of toy versions of two things that are literally big achievements of humanity. One of which is commercial aviation and the other one is space-bound rockets. And so these events, they're quite simple, right? You're just making stuff out of trash and uh, or flying a paper airplanes. But really what's happening is you're getting foundational, hands-on experience with aerospace, which is a beautiful area of science and engineering, which that delivers a lot of value to human society. And so if you ever choose to do aerospace engineering, you will have an understanding for how these things work and why things happen this way. And basically have a feel of something as abstract as airflow. I mean, we can't feel air, but 
we can watch how an airplane behaves and know how certain changes will affect the way it flies. And I guess I could, I could give you a little tour of all of the places aerospace engineering could take you. So we have here, we have commercial aviation, which is all of your flights. If you want to go visit your relatives on another continent, hop on a plane and voila. And this is done by a company called Boeing, which you might have heard of, it's pretty huge. Uh, then we also have rockets, which take us to space uh, and do research and I guess fly rich people to have a cool vacation as of now. <laughs> uh, and one of the companies doing this is SpaceX, right? Uh, I'm familiar with that one, hopefully. We also have fighter jets, which are the extreme version of planes, my favorite. So these planes, like they're not designed to carry 150 passengers, but they're designed to travel at three times or two times the speed of sound and do that for thousands of miles. It's a huge, difficult challenge. And one thing is since they're warplanes, they also have to figure out a way to not be detected by the enemy's radar. But that's not really a question of aerospace engineering actually, but just to show you, there's so much stuff in a fighter jet you'll come to appreciate. And I guess, continuing on the military theme, we have some missiles, which Lockheed Martin is in charge of those, the sponsor of Ping Pong Parachute, and evidently the builder of these missiles. So yes, look familiar? We, I mean, we just looked at one just now, except it was built out of trash. And this one was built out of legitimate metals and um, different chemicals. So we can see why they're asking you to build it out of trash, just for safety's sake. And I guess if military stuff doesn't really interest you, we could, um, let me zoom out. There's also a completely different aspect to aerospace, which we can't forget to mention, it's wind turbines. A lot of using wind as a means to generate energy has been going on for several hundred years. And now wind turbines generate 8% of all electricity in the US. And this also touches upon aerospace engineering. So how do we basically, what shape of a fin do we use to get the most performance? And I guess to remember those structural engineers of you, remember the bridges? Well, this, what, this is also a sort of structure because there's wind pushing on some sort of stick, right? So if this is a stick with the wind turbine, there is a wind and it's pushing it in this direction. Structural engineers are needed to determine how thick of a base platform they need to make sure it doesn't just get, you know, blown over. So lots of areas of engineering come together. And I guess also another comment is zero aviation, uh, emissions aviation. So air travel accounts for 2% of global CO2 emissions. And there's one company called Heart Aerospace is planning on building a all electric short range airplane, which will, they hope to deliver it by 2026. And this is a huge challenge because gasoline is very, has a very high energy density. You need for, to get the same mileage out of a gallon of gas. You need like, I don't know, a huge like backpack of batteries and batteries tend to wear out. So they're solving a big challenge here. So maybe if you like both aerospace and engineering and electrical engineering, those sound interesting. That might be the area to look out for. So hopefully I've kind of sold you why all of these, um, uh, this is kind of cool and fun. I want to ask you a, qu a question, like a poll question. Sadly, we weren't able to do a, a real poll because you don't have premium Zoom accounts. So could I ask everyone to type which company you would like to work for out of these, the ones listed here in the chat. Which one is your favorite? <laughs> if you have a preference or which one seems to be the most interesting one for you. Okay, I guess no one likes aerospace. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. You'll, you'll have several years to determine which major you want to go into. My personal favorite is, I guess, yeah, I guess, okay, Vesta, someone likes wind turbines. 
Yay, sustainable future. Um, I actually like Lockheed Martin, but I guess, or I forgot which one. Yeah, I think because they designed a 35 fighter jet. So these two companies here, uh, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin, they're, they're the ones getting all your taxpayer money because we pay taxes, but then the government has a huge military budget. And these two companies are the ones saying, hey, we have a new fighter jet we want to build. And the government says, cool, let's build it. And we pay for them. So yeah, interesting.